You know, what blows my mind is that um, our country, right, we have a legal system and you go through the legal system and you get the custody and uh, you've done everything that you're supposed to do and then someone steals your child mm -hmm. and then our country doesn't enforce its own law, its own court finding. It makes no sense. Yes, and I think you find that a lot in uh, family law, even on uh, when there are abductions or takings and defiance of orders from one county to the next, that it's just not something that uh, people have, in communities have determined to uh, put their prosecutorial resources to. Um, but so I what, would do, what do we do about that? Um, well, I think it, it's, it behooves us to make people aware that this is a growing problem, particularly among law enforcement and prosecutors, and that they're, they do have a role where they can have an impact and help recover the kids. Um, much as that was done in the Williamson ca County case, that they can, um, you know, th these children probably weren't in school, they had no connection or language ability in Mexico. Th that's a f you know, form of abuse, really, to be um, uh, removed from their primary custodial parent. Um, and so uh, it really, they have a role to play in law enforcement and prosecutors to recover these children. And hopefully, um, you know, this can be resolved in the courts when their mother returns. More people come to you that need your help than... Well, well in terms of removal of the children, you know, we're, we're funded by a grant, a state right. grant, and it, it focuses on family violence victims because this is an often a tactic of abusers to, um, when they can't exert power and control over the mother who's been a victim of family violence and she's actually moved on with her children. Or the father. Yeah, or the father. Because there are, you know, and I know in the instance of Mr. James, uh, he had a restraining order against uh, the mother of the children. And so, and I have had some men who have been uh, victims as well. All, by and large, it's mostly women who've been victims. And so they, when they can't, they feel powerless. The abuser who has been, a, you know, exerting their power over the other parent through violence, then the way to get them is to uh, take the children. That's the last blow. And I'll have clients who have um, said that I could withstand the blows. I would gladly return to the violence if I could just have my children back. Um, and it's, that's the hardest thing. Um, they, uh, so we have, that's what limits us, in, but we take and assist any parent who's income eligible for our services. We guide them as to what their remedies are and how to assist them and advocate them. Even if they're not a victim of family violence, we'll get them to the State Department. We'll assist them with the uh, lawyer affidavit about their custody rights mm -hmm. and point them in the right direction. I mean, is that why you keep doing it? And you know, as Thomas said, you know, how do you how do you just keep going yes. when you see the worst of the worst? Well, I we have such highs in this ca in these cases when we because if we're not here, no one's going to help these folks. Um, we're trying to we educate others in how to do what we do. There is an increasing number of attorneys who are doing this type of work, um, but it it's the uh, magical moment of you know, seeing that reunion um, that is so wonderful and helps me keep going. It, you can't describe um, that you had an impact on and bringing a family together that really should be together. And uh, you know, my clients are my biggest reward. They are, I, I don't need anything else than to see them back with their, their children.